A Child's Voice, a short story by Tenku. Not again. He was restless. He had to calm down or he'd hurt himself like before. He was struggling to break free, fear and panic in his eyes. He wanted to run from nothing. He started to scream. It was so loud I could only flinch at it. I couldn't even figure out what he was saying. His struggling was getting intense. He had completely lost it. I couldn't do anything anymore. It's time to call in the nurses. Shafi's finally calmed down, asleep. He would be out for a few hours as usual, and I would just be sitting in a chair as usual. It did get boring. There were times when I just wanted to get out and do something for a bit to ease the boredom, but I couldn't do that. I volunteered and promised to look after Shafi for his family. I insisted too. I couldn't leave him, neither do I really want to leave him. Times when Shafi woke up are the best, if he's not frantic, that is. We would chat like how we always did back before the whole tragedy. We would joke about and I would tell him stories or update him with what's been happening around us recently. We would play cards or he would draw. He's always been an artist. We'd do a bunch of stuff, anything except those that involve moving about. Shafi is bedbound. He can't look at bright screens or have intense light around him either. His jolts of craziness would happen much more frequently if he does. That's why his room is always dimly lit. But I do need brighter light now and then, so Shafi was kind enough to have a cloth over his eyes when that happened. His kindness has always inspired me. It is the reason why he's my best friend in the first place. I sighed. I didn't like seeing Shafi like this. His cheerful and loving sight never faded. Even so, I always managed to catch the glimpse of sadness in his eyes when he smiled. He apologized a lot those times, mainly because he thought he was a burden to me. I would have to continuously reassure him that it's alright and I wanted to be there for him. It had been almost three months now since the tragedy. The days are gradually getting slower. I was running out of ideas for things I could do with him. I just really wanted to get him out of there. I wanted him to see the world again, maybe see his family again. His father had to work to feed his family and his mother didn't have a driving license so they couldn't visit often. Every time they visit, Shafi would go frantic again. They say that he reacted badly to visitors. His five little siblings would always have to stay out of their room for safety. Plus, I doubt they would want to see their brother in that condition. Strangely enough, Shafi never mentioned his family when he was awake. I'm not sure if he doesn't want to or he just forgot. I, on the other hand, didn't want to trigger him, so I said nothing. The reason why it was weird is that Shafi loves his family so much. Everywhere he went, he would always mention his family, especially his siblings. He would always sound like a proud big brother, and he was. I remember asking him once, Hey, don't your siblings ever annoy you, considering there's so many of them? They must be loud sometimes, right? He chuckled, yeah, they do get very loud. And of course, there are times when I get annoyed with their behavior and whatnot. He turned to look out of the bus window and sighed. But I love them. Actually, I love children. Being with them puts me at ease somehow. Hmm. Now that I remembered, I thought I should try something. The next morning, I left Chafee for a bit. He was awake, so I told him I needed to get something before I left. After getting all the permission I needed, I returned to Shafi with a visitor. Yeah, a visitor. Convincing the doctor to let me bring the visitor was difficult, but he gave in for the sake of trying out whatever I planned. I entered the room first and greeted Shafi. Surely Lina walked into the room after me. I had my little sister's hand in mine because the two-year-old felt safer that way. 
The lights were turned on, so Shafi had his eyes closed under a cloth. He hadn't noticed Lina yet, so I told her to say hi. Hesitant and shy, she softly said, Hi. Shafi's head lifted a bit as he let out an inaudible gasp. H hello he replied. Gladly he didn't get frantic. Lina held her hands close to her and then looked up at me. She was probably wondering what she had to do next, but before I could tell her, Shafi spoke again. Hey, hey there, where, where are you? He held out his hand. Go hold his hand, I whispered to Lina. She gave my hand one last squeeze before she carefully made her way to the side of the hospital bed. Then she carefully placed her hand in Shafi's. He held her hand gently and smiled. What's your name? L Lina? Shafi then turned to me, or to wherever he thought I was standing, and asked, Is she your sister? Can, can I see her? Yeah, she is, I thought for a bit before I said, Sure. I just turned off some of the lights in the room, which made Lina worry. But Shafi was quick to comfort her. I got nervous when Shafi reached up to take off his blindfolds. He took them off but kept his eyes closed. He slowly opened them to adjust to the lighting then looked at Lina who was staring back at him with curious eyes. Seeing as he hasn't reacted badly I loosened his binds a bit to free up some of his movements. He gently sat up with Lina's hands still in his and chuckled softly. She's so cute. He muttered to me, and I smiled in return. Can I hold her? He then asked. I nodded, then lifted Lina up and onto Shafi's lap. I sat on the side of the bed nearby, ready to act if anything went wrong. But nothing did. Lina was slightly on end when she sat. Shafi noticed this, so he smiled warmly and held her little hand again. He started talking to her more, asking about various things. Lina's answer started off with nods or shakes, but then she spoke. Well, she spoke as good as a two-year-old could, at least. I was always impressed by Shafi's ability to interact with kids, honestly. As much as I'm fine with kids, talking to them and playing with them is a whole different story. Shafi, Lina and I chatted for a long time. Long enough for Lina to get fully comfortable with Shafi. Shafi, on the other hand, already started to treat her like he would treat his siblings. Gentle and patient, but fun at the same time. A couple of hours passed before it was time for Lina to go home. Lina gave Shafi a big hug, which he gladly returned. Then we left the room. I came back after sending Lina off to her parents. When I opened the door, Shafi was sitting quietly on his bed as usual, but he had a look to him that suggested his thoughts were elsewhere. Uh, um, Shafi? It took a whole minute before Shafi moved. He started to undo every single bind that was on him silently. Shafi, what are you doing? He looked up at me and smiled, but this time the smile was different. The tint of sadness was gone. I want to see my family. I smiled.